Well, the thing about being here is, are we in Canada? Or are we in America? Even they're confused. It's true. Even when looking around here, it's hard to tell. We've covered places like Point Roberts, Washington. Do you support the purchase of Point Roberts by the government of Canada? And the strange little American bump, Angle Inlet, Minnesota. What would you take to court exactly? Not being able to go to your own country? That seems like an infringement of your liberty, isn't it? But off the far northeastern corner of Maine is Campobello Island, a Canadian city trapped in America. We live in an area where we're isolated on all four sides. This Canadian island has absolutely no connection to Canada. Fortunately, there's one bridge to the United States. So we are required to travel back and forth for uh, almost nearly everything. Having limited health care, no gas, limited groceries, and having to travel back and forth into the U.S. It's impossible to live here now. It's really hard. And because they are literally connected to the United States, the residents are undergoing an identity crisis because of this North American border that makes no sense. And some have even proposed a trade with one of these cities that could solve their problems and more. Having so many similarities, we knew we had to go. Oh, you could almost walk. Chris is definitely right. This bridge to Campobello Island is only 847 feet long. And here in the Bay of Fundy, tides ebb and flow more than anywhere in the world. So at times, one could almost walk across a border without the bridge. Do you have your mask put on? Um, uh... Any fans, cannabis products or oils? No. All right, you're all set. To start off our curious Canadian journey, I met with Stephanie, the knower of all things Campobello at the library. Hi. Are you Stephanie? Welcome, I am. Hi. Okay, you're gonna hear this story a million times when you talk to people, but the urban myth, or rural myth, is that the guy that was in charge of drawing the boundaries for this area was drunk, and that's how we ended up being Canadian rather than American. What are other things that could help alleviate the stresses of this odd border. Every facet of existence that you can think of is complicated by, by living here. So when you say what things, everything, everything, anything that you might need or use in your normal life, it's different here. I mean, we don't have a gas uh, station, so to gas up in our cars, we have to go into Maine. This inconvenience was something we soon experienced. We were forced to cross back into the U.S. Thank you. Drive very carefully to the nearest gas station, top off, and make the trip home. Back to Canada. Are you the Off the Cuff Boys? You know the Off the Cuff Boys? It's a small island. You're a pretty special part of the world. Well, I think if you're used to living here, it's pretty unique and special and takes a lot of adjustment if you're not. Right? We have landowners come in, buy houses, and think, oh, can't do this. Two or three months later, leave. What is it that people can't deal with? It's the borders. Our morning trip to Tim Hortons, for example, outlines the struggle perfectly. Four border crossings in order to get some Timmy Hoes doesn't seem very Canadian to me. But for us, it was worth it. However, for Canadians who live here, there have been serious repercussions, especially during the pandemic. Both Canada and the United States will temporarily restrict all non-essential travel across the Canada-US border. You know how isolated everybody was during the pandemic? Well, times that by, you know, a hundred, and that's what it was like here. Many residents of Campobello Island couldn't reach the rest of their country. Here is a solution. Essentially, it's a ramp that leads down to a ferry that brings residents of Campobello Island to the rest of their country. The only problem, it doesn't run you around. So now I'm stuck at the bottom of this ramp and I want to get to the rest of Canada. Oops, no barge. Half the year, they don't have one. So they're just, in, they're just stuck. You gotta like reverse and it's dangerous and it's, scary. It smells like burnt rubber as I slam on the brakes like a mother Because of this, community members have banded together and began petitioning for a year-round ferry service. They've been fighting for a ferry here for a long time, but definitely since the pandemic they've been full on. It's been two decades worth of trying to make that happen. There was a time where Campobello was seemingly one of the most serene places in North America, and for that we're going to need a little history. 
Campobello Island, now technically a part of Canada, has a complicated history. For thousands of years, the island belonged to the First Nations people of Passamaquoddy and is recognized as the easternmost tribe in Native American history. Then, in 1604, the French took over the territory. The reign lasted until 1713 when the Treaty of Utrecht was signed, giving the land to the British. By the 1860s, the population had grown to over a thousand residents. But in 1866, the Fenian Brotherhood, a group of Irish exiles, set out to take over the island. So they geared up and invaded from Eastport, which is just across the bay. And the British uh, Navy had to uh, defend against their attack. The British Navy eventually shut them down, but the battle frightened the islanders. And because of this, just one year later in 1867, New Brunswick formed with the British North America into the country of Canada. The island was there for a catalyst for the formation of Canada as a country. In the 1880s, wealthy Americans went up north and bought up much of the property on the island for their summer homes. One of the families to move in were the Roosevelts. And in 1908, this cottage was gifted to the 32nd American president, Franklin Delano Roosevelt. It was here in 1921 that FDR developed what was thought to be polio. After Eleanor Roosevelt's death, the property was deeded to both the U.S. and Canadian governments, forming the only international park in the world. So who runs this place? Um, I do. <laughs> Are you American or I'm Canadian? I'm British. <laughs> so that confuses it even more. Yes. Yeah. A British guy running a joint Canadian-U.S. park, so... <laughs> so this is an international park. It's the only one in the world. What makes this island even more international are the residents. A large number of the population here are dual national because um, there were no hospitals um, with an easy reach of the island on the Canadian side. So many were born in the U.S. back when you automatically got United States citizenship from being born there. If you ask a, an islander, um, what do you consider yourself? They, they are proud to say, I'm, I'm a Campobello um, resident. So when I was growing up, crossing the border was really easy. Basically, you knew all the customs officers on this side and that side. Many times they just waved you through or what had you. But it has certainly become more interesting since September 11th. The attacks on 9-11 changed the world forever. Immediately after, the borders shut down, leaving many stuck at the crossings. In the following days, the Department of Homeland Security was established and entry into America would never be the same. In 2009, I think it was, uh, passports became mandatory. And not everybody can afford to uh, equip their whole family with passports. So the last time our population was this low was 1851. Residents here feel violated. Their mail has to be delivered from mainland Canada through Maine, then back into Campobello Island. Upon arrival, people here have noticed that their mail is being searched by the U.S. Border Patrol. Adding to their discomfort, gas stations, grocers, and banks are closing on the island, making Canadian citizens even more dependent on a trip to America. This is Newsbreak 26 in Southwest New Brunswick. Hundreds rallied to protest the closure of the island's only bank. This is a great island. It's full of great people and I just want to see it keep thriving. Everything I do is dual, everything I do is buy. I have a post office box in the US, I have a post office box in Canada, I have a Canadian Amazon account, and I have a US Amazon account. Healthcare? No healthcare. Are there any positives on, on this side? Cheaper products, lower taxes. No guns, more of a social network. I think there are fewer worries. You probably make more money in the U.S., but you pay more in healthcare. How American is Camp Bella? I'm gonna say 50-50, probably. That's yeah. a pretty good percentage. It is a good percentage. We're in Canada. There's, yeah. I know. <laughs> Do people here wish that this were America? No. <laughs> no. No. I would think not. I would hope not. No, I don't think they do. I think outsiders looking in mm -hmm. always jump to that conclusion that we wish, you know, maybe they wish they were, were American. No, no. I don't think the general consensus wishes we were American. Would it be a fair trade to say? Nope. <laughs> can't even let me get, get it done. No, I don't want to trade. I don't want to be part of the U.S. No, no, I don't want to trade. Yeah. What? I do. She's hollering. <laughs> she wants to trade. Lori. 
Okay, so what are the reasons why you don't want to trade? Well, because I'm Canadian. Uh -huh. I don't want to live in the U.S. I don't want to be American. I just want Canada to recognize that we're Canadian. Give us a ferry. Having this ferry could help resolve one of the most intrusive issues with this strange border, the banning of goods and produce. For example, on our trip, it was illegal to bring eggs or chicken into Canada from the U.S., which we definitely didn't. I don't, I don't think. Maybe a few eggs. Uh, bringing groceries here from the U.S. is a challenge because you don't know from day to day what you can and can't bring across the border. It depends on how trade relations are going. There'll be some product that's uh, banned for whatever reason. Not too long ago, you weren't allowed to bring citrus fruit through. Before that was potatoes at one point. Actually, I sat behind a, a gentleman the other day for 20 minutes while they figured out on the American side um, what to do with a packet of eggs that he had because all chicken products are banned. So I'm going to do the Canadian thing and instead of get one of their chicken menus items, I'm going to uh, get the poutine, of course. This is my first true Canadian poutine. I'm just going to stay here forever. An idea that has been floated is a trade between Campobello Island and Point Roberts, Washington. Each location experiences a similar situation, but are affected on opposing sides of the border. If these pieces of land were traded by the U.S. and Canadian governments, many border issues could swiftly be resolved. However, prideful residents in both situations may not agree with the shift in lifestyle. Campobello, in the eyes of many, doesn't get the support from the province or the federal Canadian government in the way that it probably should when you consider its value to the Canadian economy from its fisheries. 